Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure always to sit down and talk with you. Uh, one of these days, maybe I'll have endless time to do that, but uh, I doubt it. But so uh, I'm glad we've heard some good feedback. You like the shorter videos. So I'm going to do a couple more here. I'm going to do one on the lungs, asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, things like that. And then I think I'm going to do a short one on candida albicans because we have everybody talking about candida problems and that sort of thing. So a nice little video on those, I think a short one on each one would be, I think, good. Mm. I hope you're all well and doing good. I really do. I hope you all are working yourself back to a healthy state of awareness and a healthy state of being in the physical body, you know. Boy, times are really tough out there, aren't they? This place is caving in quick. I, You know, so everyone get your spirituality together, get your love together, and get your diet together as best you can. And, and the survival will be there. Because we don't, you know, survival beyond creation is you anyway. You're always going to survive. Never forget that. Never walk with fear because you will always be present in, in creation if you want or, or outside of that. You cannot uh, die. Uh, you unfortunately you can't get rid of yourself <laughs> so let's look at this I want to talk about and I want to read this letter to kind of give you an idea of where we're going here it says Dr. Morris I am five foot two so already at five foot two I'm thinking pituitary already and I'm 46 year old female who has been on albuterol which is an inhaler for asthma now, with these inhalers, they are a little bit of a bronchial dilator, but they're, they're very carcinogenic. They're very cancer-causing. In the Tampa Tribune newspaper, this has gone back many years ago, they did a story on the cancer-causing effects of the aerobids and all these inhalers that people were using. Now, nebulizers are a little different here. Um, I have been using it for going on 20 years now. And what that does is it locks the lymph into the lungs. It doesn't allow, it's not like our antispasmodic herbal tincture, which relaxes it and allows for expectoration. This locks, uh, locks mucus and congestion interstitially, meaning around the cells where all of it is in the first place. Uh, I know it is missing... Uh, I know it is messing with my lungs big time. Yeah, I know it, honey. Especially feeling like they are on fire with pneumonia. And that's a thing. When you feel like you're on fire, you are. And that fire is on the acid side of chemistry. You're being burnt by your own acid waste from your cells. You know, your lungs are just a bunch of cells and two fluids. You know, so you have the same thing in the lungs that you have in the liver and you have in the kidneys. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to prove that you can be healers that can heal any problem man has because a lot of you YouTubers are already demonstrating to the world that you're doing that. How cool, how perfect, and it shows the world that we've gotten too intellectual about the world of and the art of healing and like in allopathy, you're way out there on a tangent that is so dangerous karmatically for the individuals playing the games. Uh, don't want to be a medical doctor that is dealing with toxic pharmaceuticals that have fatal events and stuff like that. It's not really worth the game, you know. And most of you souls want to heal people anyway, so you want to get into the healing arts here, and it's really good healing arts. I feel as if I have adrenal fatigue, so here's the connection. We use the word COPD, meaning chronic obstructive pulmonary, and I hate to use the word disease because that's that's what they that's how they define that. And asthma, emphysema, and of course when they call it pure full-fledged COPD, you probably have a little two liter, generally two, uh, uh, a liter of oxygen around your nose, uh, hooked to your nose, and you're carrying a little oxygen tank. Now. What one must understand is that, you know, we talk a lot about the cells and we know that there's two fluids that take care of the health of the cells. This is true in your brain. This is true in your liver. This is true in your kidneys. This is true in the prostate, the ovaries, the uterus. Man, it's true everywhere. In the muscles, it's true everywhere. There's another component to all of this, which is the nervous system. Even though a bunch of cells and even though, again, fed with blood and cleaned with lymph, you still have a nervous system that's an energetic flow that makes everything happen. 
So a lot of people that feel real chronic fatigue and tired, that's a neurological fatigue. If you look at the other side, you would be involved in the lack of oxygen and carbon to cells. That kind of fatigue would be a deadly one. And that's a problem, of course, that we're seeing, of, of course, with all the stagnation, the malabsorptions, and, and back to the lungs and breathing. A lot of times your lungs are so packed with lymph that your, your thyroid has to kick your heart rate up enough to move blood faster through your body so you can keep oxygen moving through your body. Sometimes when you have a little tachycardia in the, in the heart, it's only because you're not oxygenating your cells properly. Because remember, without oxygen, you know, and carbon with it. So, real important to understand that there's a nervous system problem with everyone now with the adrenals. This is the autonomic nervous system, this is the parasympathetic down to the sympathetic, and this all is involved in every process that requires movement, activity of sympathetic, parasympathetic, that, that movement of, of, of muscles and the, the movement of, of the nervous system and everything. The autonomic nervous system is controlled by the adrenal neurotransmitters. And of course, when the adrenals are down, so is that system. Now, what we're finding in genetics, of course, is that people's kidneys and adrenals are in the dumpsters. And all you poor souls that are from, from one month old to uh, probably 30 are in this mix of chronic adrenals and kidneys. Once in a while, if you have really good, healthy parents, they're going to pull you up a little bit from this. But anything that's below 120 is low blood pressure. And when you're seeing a lot of blood pressures in the 80s and 90s, that is chronically low. And this is why you're seeing a lot of babies dying now in surgery from anesthetics. Remember the propofol Michael Jackson syndrome. And it's just that our society, the, America is a chemical freak. We are chemical freaks out the yin yang. And you know, but the, we, we like to point the finger to all our beautiful neighbors. But in America, we are lost in narcissism. We're lost in intellectualism. And so you have people like, uh, uh, yeah, I hate to mention any names, but, uh, and I heard that uh, Japan uh, kind of kicked these guys out too, uh, the soybean people. So we have a serious problem in this country with what's called neural toxins. Pesticides and herbicides are neural toxins, and there's a lot of neural. Some chemist was in the other day, and he was saying that there, they think there's over 2,000 neural toxins in our society. That's scary because neural toxins are just what they are. They shut down the nervous system. If you're really weak neurologically, just have a, a salad with a bunch of pesticides on it, and I guarantee you, you'll be struggling to take a deep breath. When you can't take a deep breath, that's suppressing of the autonomic nervous system. And this is what we see a great deal. You're seeing a lot of COPDs, a lot of asthmas coming forth because people's adrenals are shot. Therefore, their autonomic nervous systems are shot. The anxieties are high. And that's what this individual is pointing to. She's shot. Her adrenals are shot. Well, no kidding, she has asthma. So when you take a back that up, you'll see that train backs up to the adrenal glands and the autonomic nervous system. And that's true with emphysema. You still have mucus and congestion with these. But on top of that, you have the lymph system. As all this congestion in the lungs get hardened, the lungs get more and more acidic, we can bring in the word cystic fibrosis. We can bring in the word where you scar the lungs, you break down the lungs because you're burning them. And just like that little girl in the news, she's 12 years old, she can't, they're trying to get her to qualify for adult lung transplant. I didn't catch what she's dealing with, but probably cystic fibrosis. I mean, that's heavy scarring of the lungs. I mean, this is what acids do. They scar you up. It's in a disease. It's your own lymph system, and you can see it in the young people. And this is scary what we're seeing now with high acidosis of the human body. It's just unbelievable what's going on with that. And we're just continuing to pump down our children and ourselves high acid forming foods. Wow, you can't deal with high acidosis from inability to filter the lymph system through the kidneys properly and have this high acid meals all the time and come out of and expect to be well and feel well. Uh-uh, not going to happen.
And of course, the more that she suppresses expectoration of all the mucus from all the protein eating, then all that lymph mucus acid trapment is going to stay in the lungs along with cellular waste constantly being eliminated by the cells in the lungs. You're going to see this cow building and building and then they say, well, you got a mass or you got a tumor. This is pure lymphatic stuff added to the fact that your mucosa is part of your lymph system. It produces mucus. <coughs> that stuff. That mucus is protective to you, particularly against proteins. We have a society, like our society not only pushes chemicals, we push proteins. Eh, 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 eh. That'll get you in trouble more than any other food problem is proteins. And dairy proteins are by far, hands down, the most mucus forming proteins on the market. So we are literally, the babies become full of mucus. Notice when you feed your little babies all these formulas and all these dairy products, they get all the colicky, mucusy stuff. They have to burp them all the time. You know, it's just, it just it, and now, of course, with the babies with more hepatic or liver problems, now they can't digest these wacky formulas that are high protein and high fat. Now they're having problems. Remember the little boy in the news who can't handle any formula but one, and it's probably low fat, low protein formula. Because this is just what we can't deal with. And we've been dealing with that to the point where the human body is broken down and we have to fix it. Notice how we have to fix it. We have to get rid of proteins. We have to get rid of fats. We have to get rid of that side of life before we can rebuild and regenerate. How interesting. We also know that we can't regenerate tissue in an acidic medium. So if you want to rebuild lung tissue, how can you do it as long as the acids are in those interstitial areas? and breaking down your cells and all the mucus. So you have to start expectoration because you're getting dehydrated the more acidic you get, meaning that these fluids dry out, get hard, lock in, and you've had people that are coughing, trying to pull a plug out. <coughs> you know, and they go, oh my, my, my. That, that's what happens to this sputum, this mucus, uh, 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 when the lymph system isn't filtering or getting rid of it. That's why the fruit diet is so good, because it is expectorating, it is astringent, of course, it is hydrating. All the things that you want, you find in fruits, berries, and melons above all other foods. Above all other foods. I don't care what people are saying out there. Yes, we'll argue that the quality sucks, and if you have a good pineapple picked off, ripe off a plant, you're in nirvana land, baby. Absolutely. And that's what we need. We need to get the positive God force into this world. All of you, let's open up and bring that positive God force into this world and start cleaning the slate. Now, she says he has the adrenal fatigue. Of course, that goes with it. And I'm always cold, so I feel as if I have a thyroid dysfunction. All right. So let's think about that. Five foot two, pituitary. Well, now wait a minute. We're talking about a little thyroid. She's cold. Now, is it possible that she has a pituitary weakness that's suppressing thyroid function with TSH, low TSH? Well, the only way you're going to find out is pull a blood work up on TSHs and look at that. But your best way is to look at other indications. This is a female. Is her periods irregular? Not on time. Does she have excessive bleeding? This would bring you into pituitary problems. The other tall tale sign is the iris, the pictures. Get a picture of your eye and look. Because if you have a pituitary problem, what else do you have transverse bowel problems absolutely absolutely so you guys are really getting this down good now in february she went on a 52 day melon fast with just eating them only with the help of my good friend rita from the facebook fan page yeah rita well on the 52 days that's a great incredible fast you did good good job this is Marilyn. good job honey uh, she was drinking the hill all tea and drinking the three lung tea. Smart girl. Because as you begin to detoxify and you begin to hydrate, 
With the astringent value of the fruit, you'll start getting expectoration. <coughs> More mucus flow, easy to flow, easy to expectorate. At the same time, sweetheart, get back to those adrenal glands. Hit those adrenal glands. And I would do, probably, if it was me, I would do the adrenal, the New Zealand adrenal glandulars 400s and start with one three times a day. You can go up from there because this is a chronic case, obviously. So bring those adrenals. Take the kidneys because you want to clean that lymph system in your body because you've got to clean these lungs. You either clean the lungs this way or you clean the lungs down through the lymph system. Now with lung cancers, we, get, we see 50-50, if not more, coming up this way. So a lot of times when the body don't want it, it gets rid of it fast, doesn't it? She's also taking the form of this kidney, lymphatic, adrenal, stomach, and bowel, endocrine, antispasmodic in the lungs. And that's the thing. You can use them. We have a new antispasmodic that I kicked it up a whole nother notch. So it's much better. Uh, this one is good. But the other one, I think, is just going to be, the new one's going to be really, really good. But it works as an antispasmodic. And that's the beauty of herbs versus chemicals. Chemicals are cancer-causing, suppresses expectoration. Herbs... Relax the nervous system, stop the cramping or the spasms, and allows the body to expectorate. That's God. That's the beauty of God versus man and his playground of chemicals. Got to stop it. We're, we, we reach saturation of chemicals now. And uh, I don't know. I heard the Bilderbergs are meeting this week, are they? Hmm, interesting. Uh, I decided to kick it up a notch and had a little bit more money to purchase your Parasite G formula as I feel I had parasites and went to, wanted to get rid of them. So then I started taking the Parasite G formula faithfully and took the regular dose of support to try and kill off anything inside. And just finished almost of two months of being on Parasite G. Oh, that's, that's more than enough. One month. If you don't get them out in one month. Now, there's a lady that was in yesterday and she's been on the program for... Geez, probably six months or more, and she just put herself on Parasite. I think it was Emergy, and she started throwing up worms. And it's like, you didn't get rid of them the first month? So she started throwing up worms. So we have her on a, on a regiment, because you if you got worms, you're going to have eggs. And you got to worry about time and all that. So over uh, the next four months, one has to play that game a little bit to get themselves dewormed properly. Ugh. My problem with taking on too many herbs. Well, you don't take on too many herbs, sweetheart. Now you have to take on too many herbs. Uh, I would get this tightening in my chest, and it has not seemed to go away at all, and it feels as if it's part of me has died. Oh, wow. After the 52 days, I sort of fell off the bandwagon for about a week and went back to the sad way of living and also had to eat a little steamed vegetables as I thought. Well, you know, well, we all kind of go through that, so don't beat yourself up. Don't beat yourself up, and don't, 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 don't stay there. Another issue for me also is I had uh, uh, bulimia from ages uh, age of 13 to 42 and in the past 25 years have had severe stomach pain on and off from this. Well, you know, sweetheart, you got to stay with your fruits and your berries and your melons. Find yourself a balance that you can walk with. Uh, sometimes when we fast, we kind of spring back the other way. So find yourself a balance and start detoxifying. This is your nervous system and everything. So pick yourself up from where you are. Start on the diet. I would start a little gentler on the herbs. I would do two kidney herbs, uh, one capsule, one liquid, two uh, lymphatic formulas, one capsule, one liquid. I do the lungs number two. You know, start uh, cleaning those lungs out. Uh, you have plenty of, uh, of parasite G. That's, that's uh, plenty. I only put someone on two weeks to a month, you know, unless they have a bad infestation. Then, then you're going to be a little longer there. That's stomach pain. And start sipping on that hill all tea. Don't make it too strong. You can also get an aloe plant and start using aloe vera. You could also buy slippery elm marshmallow in and of itself, by itself, and drink that a little more. But the healing properties of grapes and apples and stuff like that are very good as well. But here we got a neurological problem. I can already tell you have transverse bowel problems just in, in what I see here. So there's some colon issues that you're seeing and stuff. And sometimes when you detox, you remember, you're bringing up these things. Even though you're going for the lungs, you've got to remember that this is a systemic problem. Now, we do fill up. You know, with that said, we do fill up with mucus from just drinking a lot of milk and ice, eating ice creams and stuff like this. 
So those are the things you might want to, you know, kind of uh, obviously throw away. But let's don't get up in the uh, almond milks and the uh, soy milks. Why, why do we feel we need a milky substance anyway? I think we should get away from that whole idea of I need some kind of milky substance that uh, doesn't really... Uh, Nothing really to use it for. I don't like to put them in smoothies. You want a smoothie. You want an all-fruit smoothie. You don't want uh, uh, yogurts and uh, and other milks in a smoothie. That's not a true smoothie. You know, that's man in his mind again. Well, why don't we add uh, some uh, hip protein? And uh, why don't we add some... Uh, yeah, that's man's mind right there. Another issue for me, also, I had, oh yeah, we went through that. When I was 21, five weeks after giving birth, I decided to go on a slim fast diet. Uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm just drinking that alone with milk for two weeks. Holy crap. And that's with asthma. That, that's a bad thing. I ended up with the worst pain ever possible in my life. My kidneys were shutting down. Oh, my God, honey. Well, you know what here? It sounds like you've got really genetically weak kidneys and adrenals, and I mean chronically so. It's what it sounds like to me. Uh, you're 46. It's from definitely, you know, in there. So you just want to back up. Get away from all that crap, of course. Um, I think I fainted once. Holy crap. And that's taking that slim fast crap. I mean, this is all crap. We got to go to the living, the living fruit, the living berries, the living melons, and the living vegetables. Okay. My doc put me in intensive care for two weeks. Holy crap, honey. Two weeks and I was hooked on all sorts of stuff. They told me if my kidneys had not started pulling through, I would have had to have them life through. Uh, she had to have been flown to Des Moines, Iowa. The doctor told me I was not getting enough protein from meat. Ho! Oh, but from listening to your videos, I know he was wrong. Very wrong. You, you, you do not want to start consuming proteins with kidney failure. Uh, 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 uh. You might want to call uh, Jennifer B and give her your creatine levels and stuff like that. You know, check a look at your creatine levels because, again, with the kidneys, now, I want to kind of keep this video to the lung thing, but I was just thinking, in my question to you, how do I kill these parasites? You know what? You've already done that enough. Get your thinking more lymphatic, sweetheart. Lymphatic and, and neurological. Lymphatic and neurological. And you can handle both of those at the kidney and adrenals. Get the lungs to start cleaning up the mucus and breaking all this hardened sputum loose in the lungs so you can expectorate it. Clean the bronchi, the lungs, etc., etc., etc. But you've got to strengthen the autonomic nervous system as well. I would do brain and nerve number two. I would hit the adrenals real hard and the kidneys with it and start getting that lymph moving, moving. And that will also rebuild the kidneys while you're doing that. And keep with a balanced diet to where you can handle that. About 80% fruits, berries, and melons, and maybe at night some salads and stuff like that. You don't have a tumor, cancer, you're not dying here right off, but you want to get this before you start scarring your lungs, blah, 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 blah. How do I, okay, uh, how do I get off of this albuterol without having an asthma attack and thinking I need the albuterol to bring me out of it? Yeah, the albuterol is the one you've got to think, rethink. Uh, nebulizing treatments, okay. Ven like you were saying, Venlo, uh, you're on that. Something like that, nebulizing treatments, it'll be okay. But you want to use that antispasmodic constantly then. Use the antispasmodic every hour, every two hours if you have to. You really want to try to use that. If not, you use the albuterol, but you just keep going. But albuterol is famous for causing cancer. Famous that I know of. I, pu I tried putting a wet towel on my head and breathing the three lung and heal all tea into my lungs, but it seems when I do this, it sets off an asthma attack. That's because it's a neurological thing. Your body's trying, and it could even because you're so spastic here, uh, because you're so inflamed, so acidic that you're spastic here in the lungs. And this is true, all of you guys with COPD of every level. You can use castor oil packs over on the lungs, which is very good. It's an anti-inflammatory or antacid. So a castor oil packs on the lungs are okay, of course. Anything that will help break up that sputum. Um, you can do uh, cupping here with the hands a little bit if you like. Uh, things like that. 
hot and cold, hot and cold on the back. And listen, work on these neurolymphatic points on each side of the sternum here. Work clockwise on these neurolymphatic points. Dig in, dig in till it hurts and work these points. Work them down your back. Get your kidneys filtering. Get your lymph moving. Get everything hydrated in your body. If you have to use a little, a little, uh, uh, inhaler or something as you move, keep trying to use that antispasmodic. Use it more often if you have to. Uh, and just do what you have to to work yourself because it's going to require you working yourself back out of this. That's what it's going to do. You got yourself deep in there, you're going to back out as you get the body healthy and you're fixing the causative factors. And of course, probably as you're going back, probably genetics in the adrenals and kidneys. That's why you've been suffering all your life. Uh, it seems like when it's not turning into asthma, it's turning into pneumonia. Good. Have a good pneumonia on me, please. Because again, let's get out of this concept of diseases, crap, and medical thinking. If your lungs are full, now remember, they blame pneumonia on pneumococcus. Well, then how come in 40% of the cases, no pneumococcus present? All right, so let's get away from thinking bacterial causative factors, which is bull crap, and let's get into reality here. And so this is a neurological weakness on top of mucus, and this is common. This is the way everyone falls into these things, and you just work yourself back out of these. Uh, let me see here. Pneumonia, you've just got to latch your lungs, clean themselves out. If you freak out every time you have a, a, a pneumonia type of feeling, uh, and I know it's panicky and scary because when the adrenals are down, so a breathing is always an, an anxiety thing. No question, but do it myself. So I know all of that, but by using that brain to nerve number two, you're strengthening the nervous system by increasing the adrenals. You're increasing neurotransmitters, which is incre increasing neurological function. And at the same time, you're using herbal antispasmodics so you don't retard or stop expectoration. The worst thing you can do is stop the lungs from expectorating because that's that's your next cancer in mass. You can't lock acids interstitially. That is the most dangerous thing you can do to your cells. And then, of course, lung cancer is not fun. And then, of course, the more acidic you fill up with fluids because, again, the response to acidosis is edema. So just remember all of that. Uh, huh. You could do hyperbaric chambers and everything, I guess. So, oh, I've been using castor oil packs and also practicing breathing techniques through using abdominal breathing. Yeah, get that down in those lower lobes there. Use that abdominal breathing. Smart cookie, this girl. I also have a 12 year old. Oh, my God. So, listen to this. I also have a 12 year old daughter who faints sometimes. Well, again, Right back here, man, this is autonomic for you, and this is where you're seeing this. Remember, you were genetically compromised with kidney and adrenals, and your daughter is much more so. Same thing. Doesn't have to show itself as asthma. No, it doesn't have to. It can show itself as fainting. It can show itself as lightheadedness. It can show itself as, as meek and, 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 and shy. It can show itself as major anxieties. That's the adrenals. So, you've got some work on your daughter. Same formulas. It is especially when she gets out of a hot bath. Now listen to this. That is neurological, sweetheart, completely. When you take a neurological weakness and you put them into heat, you go down like this. We always in hospitals turn the room down. Everyone that has a COPD or likes their houses cold because that's alkaline. Because we're dealing in a highly acidic environment. And by locking with these uh, 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 um, inhalers, by locking this acid and sputum into these interstitial areas, it's even more on top of more because cells of the lungs keep producing acid waste. People keep eating foods that are mucosic responsive, uh, which means producing mucus. So all of this stuff fills the sinuses, the voice box, the bronchi, the lungs, but it also fills the bowels, the liver. Because you notice when you detoxify what you see coming out? Mucus, mucus, mucus at all levels of colors. So your daughter, before she has your grandbaby, you had to fix your daughter because you're not going to like where your grandbaby's going to be. That's not good. And this daughter of yours got to be real careful with any surgeries because that's the problem. If she's already fainting from real low neurotransmitters, imagine going under propyl ball for this poor thing. Mm -mm. Hot is neurological uh, 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 draining. So you want your batteries last longer when you keep them in a cool place. 
So cool her off. Do not do hot baths. Because get her nervous system back up and running, which means you're going to start at the adrenals and kidneys. Uh, you can use brain and nerve formulas. Absolutely. I was wondering what the best protocol for her to be. Same thing as you, Mom. Uh, I want to thank you. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks, sweetheart. Appreciate it very much. This is Maryland. Thank you, Sunheart74. So, this goes in into any of the lung conditions. All of these are the same. Just remember, the body's very simplistic. Bunch of cells, two major fluids. One feeds them, one cleans them. One's a kitchen, one's a sewer department. You got a kitchen and a bathroom in every house, including your human house. And so, just remember that when the bathroom backs up, ha, that's where all the pain, that's where all the acid, that's where all the scarring, that's where all this comes from, is predominantly, predominantly the acid side of chemistry. There is alkalosis, but if you, if you focus to more on acidosis, you'll find your remedy far better. Yeah. So, I think that uh, a cystic fibrosis, same thing. Now, you guys with cystic fibrosis, this is a burger bear. This is heavy scarring of the lungs. So, you have to go the same way. You can use castor oil packs. You've got to fix that neurological connection no matter what. But you've got to move lymph. You've got to move lymph. And I tell you, I've had some very advanced uh, cystic fibrosis case and then some not so advanced Advanced cases, I've got my heart squeezing like crazy because it's just sad, sad, sad to see these poor souls dealing with this high acid involvement. So no matter what lung condition, and this also spills right over into lung cancer. You've got lung cancer, what do you got? You've got cells that are being damaged by the acids from their own waste. That means the lymph system in your lung tissue is backed up. Well, if it's backed up in your lungs, guess where else it's backed up? Yep, this is a systemic fluid, right? So you have it backed up all over the body. But when you start getting tumors or masses in the lungs, turn that switch. Go on a big fruit fast. I'll tell you, grapes really clean the lungs out really well. We've had a lot of lung cancer cases. And if you're a lung cancer that's filling up with edema, keep getting aspirated, but don't give up. You start detoxifying your body, kick in the kidneys and adrenals, start moving those lymphs, get in the lung formula, start expectorating, and you'll pull all these tumors out. You'll move whatever you need to through the lymph nodes and clean that way, and then you'll restore your lung health and vitality. Remember, cancer is just their word for damaged cells with acids. That's not a disease. They don't own people. They don't own the word liver, FDA. They don't own the word pancreas, FDA. We we do. We're the people. Thank you. Now, uh, any any of these things with the lungs or anything like that is in detox, detox, detox. And you'll see the value of the golden key of detoxification. It will unlock the mysteries of pain and swelling and, 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 and tumors and all of this. And it'll clean and restore the human body. I love it. It's perfect. It's where it's the only focus man can have right now at his advanced level. Look at this poor 12-year-old girl. She's fainting. But we're seeing it in babies. So it, it is, we have a very serious genetic problem in the kidneys and adrenals. It's time all apathics wake up to this. But what are you going to do with it? If you don't understand how to regenerate tissue, you ain't going to do nothing with it. That's the problem. So any lung condition, no matter what, Always work on the adrenals. Always work on the kidneys. Get that lymph moving. Clean up the gut. Always clean up the gut, the bowels, the GI tract, and get into those lungs and start expectorating. You can use some castor oil packs. Remember the nervous system to the COPD chain, which is asthma, emphysema, COPD at the top, and, and just go after those adrenals and go after that. With your daughter, she's probably backed up lymphatically, sweetheart, all the way up in the cerebellum. That's why she's lightheaded, dizzy, fainting, and that we need to clean out. Very, very important at age 12. So if your daughter's listening, sweetheart, you need to eat fruits, berries, and melons, no matter what your classmates think, and get your lungs cleaned out and get your, get your adrenal glands up. So your nervous system's up because this is a bad start at 12 years old to go through that. So I think I just about covered uh, all the lung things I can think of. There's all kinds of 
you know, diagnosis is out there. But the bottom line to well bill is that the hell bill we live in comes from the acid side of chemistry, all the mucus from the wrong foods that we're eating, and get away from the proteins, particularly anything that smacks of a dairy protein. That's why, Marilyn, you went into such pain. You went on the very thing that's like a stick of dynamite to someone like you. You never take a COPD or, or uh, an asthmatic or on, or you don't put, give them on mucus. I remember I was in the hospital one day and uh, I was at the cardiac ward. I was uh, watching the heart monitors of this one case. And I saw this RN and LPN. The RN, uh, I, I can't remember which one, had the glass of milkshake. And this guy, I think it was the, the LPN was suctioning this guy. His mucus, he was, he was full of mucus. <laughs> full of mucus. And the RN had a milkshake for him to drink. And, and, he, and she was saying, Mr. Jones, you have to drink your milkshake. And I looked over there and I said, you're killing him. Because it, it pissed me off so bad that they were trying to force this guy that was suffocating on his own mucus. More mucus! That very, very bad hospitals, very, very bad dietitians. that's not how it works. So learning all you can about health and wellness is for everyone's sake. So it, make it a fun thing. Don't over-intellectualize. This is the problem you see. You're going to see it on this site too. Over-intellectualizing that which is simplistic. Keep it simple and you'll always be a good healer. I've trained a lot of healers in my life. And I will say that some get trapped intellectually and then they're caught and they lose the ability to be a good healer. I've seen that in chiropractors. I've seen chiro medical doctors have got it and we came, started healing people right up and then were pulled away again. So watch that little mind. Keep control of that little mind of yours so you can always be happy and well. All right. Thank you so much for listening to these videos. I know it's your precious time and I really thank you because if you can take this time and spend it getting yourselves well, there's nothing more important than yourself. Remember that non-ego, but yourself. You are the vehicle for God to experience itself in creation. Remember that and give yourself love and everyone around you, even the little plants and animals. Okay. All right, so we're going to go to another video uh, called Candida or Fungus Problems. And so I'm going to close this one down. Uh, I love you guys. Bye-bye. Have fun.